Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. I'm so happy that you join me, that you press play. You're going to spend a little time with me today. We're going to be talking about some very, very fun stuff. Is the Pope holding like an interfaith, new world order, one world religion prayer service to the aliens? Is that what he's doing? Is that what he's doing? those things where they're all getting together and he's trying to get more uh, more people to the church I don't know this is gonna be a fun show because we're gonna speculate we're gonna pretend that the world and everything in it is like a big gigantic movie summer blockbuster I say and that we're all the lead characters and uh, this is the twist this is where it gets really strange did that the, the Pope is meeting with all of these major religious leaders in the city of Ur, where Abraham was from. And also, the Anunnaki. So they say, I don't know, but I think you're gonna need to buckle up for this one. Hey, welcome back, huh? Say what you want about the, uh, the Pope and the Vatican. Right, say what you want about them, but this this about tops it off. This about tops it off. I did a program just recently. I've done a lot of programs, right, on the old Pope, the Popey. <laughs> I he changed the Lord's Prayer back a year, what, a year or two ago. Said that God would never tempt you, even though it's pretty clear that, yeah, you know, he led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. Temptation is you know it's part of the uh, it's part of the struggle, man. that we all have to overcome. That's why when negative thoughts come our way and, and tempting thoughts come our way, it's not us that does it. It's uh, it's an adversary. It doesn't mean that that's, you know, just when those terrible thoughts, sometimes you're like, where do they come from? They don't come from God. No, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. And today it seems like all the uh, all the, uh, the religious gurus and leaders in the land, they seem to be just peddling a bunch of fear, peddling a bunch of nonsense. So why not me come on here and talk about the madness of the fact that the Pope is holding this interfaith prayer meeting between March 5th and the 8th in uh, the city of Ur. That's right. That's uh, yeah. That's that's in Iraq. Yeah, that's in Iraq. It's uh, interesting. Interesting. Stuff. Because these are the people. These are the people that um, everybody's supposed to put their faith in, right? You know, the a lot a lot of Catholics. <laughs> Our president's supposed to be a Catholic, right? A lot of, uh, a lot of interesting things. I mean, I don't know. Call me crazy, right? Uh, I was a Catholic once. I'm not anymore. I don't really have a religion. Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, they didn't really have a religion. They just served God. That was it. They just, they sought God. They wanted to know the truth. And they served God. That was it. You know, but the Pope, everybody goes to him. They think that he's like, you know, the vicar, right? He's the, uh, he's got the title. Even though I think that he renounced it or something. I don't know. That's another show. But I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta question whether or not when your top guys are doing horrible things to like the youth. I mean, you might want to question whether or not you want to put your faith, uh, you know, in uh, a guy who uh, you know he holds his services in a place that looks like a snake. That's right, the big the big hall. Looks like a big snake, it's so scary. I got these spooky sculptures. But nothing, nothing, I gotta tell you, nothing was like what they did for the nativity scene. Oh yeah, the nativity scene this year. That was fun, that was fun. Here, it looks like this. That's right, looks like you got Darth Vader and astronauts and all sorts of spooky stuff. I did a show about this too. That was a nativity scene. And guess what it was based on? Take a wild guess, take a wild guess. They're going to, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the land 
the land of uh, the Anunnaki, the land of uh, mythic Sumeria, where they worship the Sumerian gods. Going to the ziggurat, which is, you know, was just discovered, like what, like a hundred years ago or so? It was there, it was like the, the most ancient place. All the pyramids, they say, are built on this. Tower of Babel, built on this design. Right, because they said that's where, this, that's where Abraham was from. The city of Ur. Ur, sounds a lot like air, like error. I'm just saying. Because, you know, Abraham was from there. That's not where he went. God said, I don't want you out of this land. <laughs> get, get, get out of the land. And he let him out. He let him out just with a feeling. This, um, this nativity scene, which was, uh, it was goofy. I mean, it was, you know, it was based on Sumerian mythology. That's, that was the thing. And I was saying on the channel, right, how long have I been saying? It's all about the, uh, the Planet X and the Biru, right? All that stuff in the world, they talk about it. The Anunnaki coming, the old gods coming, all that stuff coming. I'm not saying it's happening. I'm not saying that's why he went there, but it's weird, right? I mean, it is weird. Like, you know, it would be like the Pope's like, hey, I'm having a uh, inter interfaith prayer meeting in the uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza. That would be weird, right? Like, why are you doing it there? Right? And this place predates that. Hmm, interesting. Connected to the Abrahamic faith. We just had, what, the Abrahamic Accords. We see a move towards this one world religion, this one world, so we see it happening. The main power players, the people that are behind the scenes pulling the strings, they don't want people thinking. They want everybody to believe a certain way. So why not get everybody on the same page? So it's going to uh, City Ver. Of course, it's a big deal. So the Pope's going there. He's going there at a time when there's like there's a lot of unrest. There was like an attack just recently, I guess on um, you know on U.S. Uh, you know I guess U.S. forces that were stationed there. It's been a lot of unrest and a lot of unease, but a lot of people are very excited, right? A lot of people are very excited about this because they think it's going to bring some tourism. It gets a little weird, right? Because you know, you see the celebrities all the time dressing up with their headdresses, you know, with their crowns. Everybody like the uh, the Queen of Heaven, uh, Ishtar is one of the names. But we've been talking about this on the show. We've been talking about this. Right? I've talked about Artemis and the temple that just the uh, the temple of Artemis that had the columns. mosque that they just you know basically now became the, the big mosque that's where the temple of artemis is and i i made little jokes about how yeah we're moving closer and closer to worshiping those sumerian gods in a prayer service this would be like the place this ziggurat was it was built for the god to come down and uh, rest with 
they'd actually even provide in the bedchamber. They provide like a maid, right? Which gives you the idea that whoever these gods are, they need a place to sleep too, you know? Sounds to me like the Anunnaki. If they exist, they could be just demons, right? I know a lot of people like to say that there's no such thing as aliens. It's okay. Maybe there aren't. I don't know. They could be demons too, right? But these are beings that have been around a lot longer than us. And there's a lot of ancient, if you know anything about Sumeria and the Sumerian tablets, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of story that, uh, that has to do with the, uh, the creation of mankind. It's like almost a different story, but there's the flood. There's a lot of things. So I just find it strange that the Pope's going there. I mean, I'm not saying that he's, he's going to be worshiping the Anunnaki. He's be like, come to us from the heavens. Those that fell from the heavens above, the Anunnaki. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's weird, right? It's weird. Tell me in the comments. Do you think this? I think it's weird. I want to tell you who this, this ziggurat was built for. The moon god. Hmm. Right? Apollo and Artemis. Apollo would be the sun. Artemis would be the moon. Some people say like Apollo because, you know, Trump was a big fan of Apollo. Apollo was Trump. And Artemis, like a little bit of a Biden. I don't know. One looks like the sun, one looks like the moon, some people would say. I don't know who would really say it, but we did do shows about Artemis. We talked about the hunt being on, right? Because she was the goddess of the hunt. Well, Artemis is, uh, is also Anana. Anana. She is the uh, Sumerian goddess of love, sensuality, fertility. She's also known as Ishtar. All the celebrities love to worship her, right? The Assyrians, the Akkadians, the goddess Ishtar. They go by many names, right? Many names. These uh, got Aphrodite. They all, it's the same. It's the same. It's just the story is twisted a little bit. And um, she is the daughter, get this, of Enki. Yeah, we're back to Planet X. Planet. Now, why? Why do I find this interesting? Because you know, you've been on the channel long enough, right? I've said it. The channel wouldn't be where it is today if I didn't have those crazy dreams <laughs> and all that crazy coincidence to get me to talk about Planet X, to talk about Nibiru, to look into the Sumerian tablets, to talk about all this. I don't know why I'm doing it. <laughs> it's just interesting. And But here you have, in, in uh, real time, it's, everybody's kind of like, everything's different in the world, right? It's almost like they're getting ready for something. I'm not saying they're coming, but maybe they're coming. Three of this uh, ziggurat was um, the ziggurat de Ur, the ancient ziggurat located next to these ruins. It was um, re-excavated and like rediscovered by this guy, Woolsey, I think is his name. Let me see if I can find him. Yes, yeah, Sir Leonard Woolsey, Woolley, Woolley, Woolley. He was a Woolley, working on behalf of the British Museum. And you know, there's all sorts of pictures of him discovering this, discovering that. All these interesting things came out. What, like about a hundred years ago. And here it's been restored. And now they're holding a big service to it, which I think is just weird. Don't you? I think it's weird. I don't know. It's strange. I mean, it could just be a weird, it could just be a weird coincidence, of course. I mean, he doesn't have to be, you know, calling down <laughs> the old gods. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm not saying aliens are gonna come in this guy. But uh, the, the papers talk about it enough, right? The papers, they talk about how they, uh, the Pentagon, they have uh, self-replicating material, material metals that can, you know, if it's ripped in half, can heal itself or something. That was like in the paper just recently. I say paper by, I mean the internet. ago department of defense they came out we're in possession of otherworldly craft yeah we get it okay either you're setting us up and um getting us all spooked out and getting us worried 
about something and you're going to be shooting things up into the sky like you did with those planets. Remember I did the video about the two planets <laughs> that uh, like appeared in Saudi Arabia and it was actually just kind of an event? It looked pretty real. A lot of people were freaked out by it. Whether there's going to be some kind of a fake thing, maybe there's going to be nothing at all. I don't know. I'm just saying I saw that headline and I was like, that's weird. <laughs> and that's coincidental. And it makes a lot more sense. It ties in the nativity scene to this. It does. It really does. But should you be worried about all that? No. Should you be stressed? No. What you should be doing is living your life. What you should be doing is getting excited. Because, I mean, you don't gotta play, you don't have to play games with this. This is, this is not for, um, this is a good day. Now, all the uh, things that I've been sharing about how the world's gonna get spooky and everything else, I've also reminded everybody that if, you know, if you're on the right side of truth and love and peace, it doesn't matter if things get hard. Because you know this is not the end result. And you know that you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna flourish where you stand. You're gonna flourish where you, where you're planted. You're going to be like a tree down by the river, right? Not in a van, but a tree. Sheltering everybody. Remember Chris Farley? Van down by the river. That's not going to be you. You're going to be like a tree. Starts like a small little mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is a little teeny bit of faith is planted in you. You watch a video. Maybe you get encouraged. All of a sudden, maybe you say a little prayer. Teach me the truth. You ask for God. And all of a sudden, that little thing grows into this beautiful tree. This beautiful tree that shelters birds and you know and, and uh, casts shade for those that are past by it's beautiful to look at and also gives you nourishment nutrients the greatest of all trees comes from a little teeny little seed truth is a great thing so don't be stressed out but let me know in the comment section if you think the aliens are coming or the demon invasion is coming or if it already has i don't know i don't know but i do know that a lot of people that are supposed to be shepherds, that are supposed to be shepherding the flock, supposed to be teaching, what they're doing is they're encouraging a lot of people to be very hateful. And, uh, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. We're supposed to love everybody. If you've got a problem with this person or that person for the way they look, the way they dress, the way they think, the way they act, you're not, you're not walking in the truth. you got to love. you got to forgive. you got to be a light in the world. So I tell all those shepherds, I put something on Twitter about this. I'll tell you what, you know what? You don't like the speckled sheep? Bring them to old Jacob. Jacob likes the speckled sheep. Give me those speckled sheep. Because I love all of you. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what you believe. I don't care how you look. I don't care who you date. I don't care. And the Lord doesn't care. You know what the Lord cares about? Your heart. God is not like a hypocritical, jerk-nosed man that looks at the outward experience, looks at the outward man, looks at the way a person votes and says, oh, you're bad. <laughs> or, oh, <laughs> looks at the way a person dates and says, oh, you're bad. God doesn't look to that. He doesn't look to the outward man. He looks at the heart. And what's in your heart? You got love in your heart? You got God in your heart? You got the truth, the spirit of living God within you? All of you do. Don't be worried about no Anunnaki. So, hope the Pope has a good time in his interfaith prayer meeting. And I hope all of you take the time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share the videos around. You know that when you like and you comment, that helps this channel to grow. It helps it to reach more people. I'm telling you, it's like a barren wasteland out there. I look at, I know a lot of YouTube pastors and preachers. And it's like, I, you know, at the end, it's like, I, I want to go in a bunker. I want to build a bunker. I'm not trusting in God at all. You know what God says to Passover? You're going to find out soon. He says, go kill that fatted calf, right? Or kill that goat or kill that whatever it was. So many people have different ideas. And get ready. Get your feet. Get your, your get, get be in your clothes. Get your house clean. Get everything ready to go. Because in an instant, you'll be pulled away. So what are you worried about? What are you worried about? God's going to lead you through. He's going to park those seas for you. He's going to take the graves, turn them into a garden. That's what he's going to do. He's going to take the ashes. He's going to turn it to beauty. That's what he's going to do. That's what God does. It's the way God rolls. I love all of you. Thanks for stopping by. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Click it.